Hello, Dazzle. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me today. I'm glad that you're here. Today, I want to talk about being a bully. When we talk about bullying, it is generally from the perspective of being the victim rather than the victimizer. But one thing that I have learned while working in psychiatric nursing is that we are far more likely to prevent people from becoming victims if we can prevent people from becoming victimizers. Thus, it is essential that we understand what causes a person to become a bully and how we can help them change course. So the National Center Against Bullying defines bullying as an ongoing and deliberate misuse of power in relationships through repeated verbal, physical, and or social behavior that intends to cause physical, social, or psychological harm. I think that it's also important to include what bullying is not. So it's not a single episode of social rejection or dislike. And it's not a single episode of being nasty or spiteful. And it's not random acts of aggression or intimidation. And it is not mutual uh, arguments, disagreements, or fights. While those things certainly can be part of bullying, they are not by themselves. They can only become bullying if the events become repeated and part of a larger pattern. Because that is a fundamental part of what bullying is, a pattern of behavior. This is a type of behavior that the bully engages in on a regular basis towards one or more victims. There are numerous types of behavior that a person can engage in to bully another person. They can use physical abuse, which can be hitting, kicking, pitching, slapping, biting, or even spitting on someone. They can employ social power to start rumors. They can gossip about their victim or verbally taunt or exclude their victim from important social events. Bullies can engage in their behavior in person or while online. They can bully others alone or as a group of bullies. When a person becomes an adult, they may or may not continue to be a bully towards their peers. However, being a bully as a child does make it more likely that a person will become a bully as an adult. As an adult, a bully may also employ passive-aggressive behaviors, while children generally don't. Passive-aggressive behavior is a pattern of indirectly expressing negative feelings instead of openly and directly addressing them. There's this disconnect between what a person who is exhibiting passive-aggressive behavior says and what they are doing. There isn't as much research on adults that are bullies as there are children who are bullies. What we know about children bullies is that about 30% of children are bullies by self-report. This is an enormous portion of children that are intentionally causing harm to other children. And an unknown portion of these children go on to bully as adults. So all bullies have certain traits in common. Specifically, they like to control and dominate other people. They find it hard to empathize with others or see from another person's perspective. They like to use others to get what they want. They will rarely act out when there is an authority figure around. Instead, they choose to wait for the right moment when that authority isn't looking. They view weaker people as prey. They don't accept responsibility for their actions. And they lack foresight and are unconcerned with the consequences of their actions. Children that are bullies are more likely to be male and from a low socioeconomic family. Those who were considered the bullies were more than twice as likely to experience depression, anxiety, and ADHD. They are also six times more likely to be diagnosed with oppositional defiant disorder, characterized by ongoing episodes of anger and hostility, especially towards authority figures such as parents, teachers, and other adults. One study found that about half the children who were engaging in bullying behavior were still bullies four years later. 
those children that are bullies are very likely to be experiencing physical abuse or emotional neglect at home. The home environment of a child has a large impact on their bullying behaviors, more so than any other factor. However, those children that are experiencing abuse in the school system are also at an increased risk for becoming bullies. Kids who bully are more likely to abuse alcohol and other drugs in adolescence and as adults. They're more likely to get into fights, vandalize property, and to drop out of school. They're more likely to engage in early sexual activity. They are more likely to have criminal convictions and traffic citations as adults. And they are more likely to be abusive towards their romantic partners, spouses, and children when they become adults. Many children that are bullies go on to become criminals as adolescents and adults. And this means that they are continuing to engage in the violent and aggressive behaviors that are defined as abuse, assault, and battery when a person becomes older. One study found that 33% of juvenile crimes were committed by those individuals that were both bullied and bullying others, despite only representing 8.8% of the group. This further reinforces the long-standing belief that victimization is the number one risk factor for a person becoming a victimizer. Preventing child abuse in our homes and schools is the single most important intervention for preventing children from becoming bullies. Reducing the number of bullies would have a direct impact on other areas of violence. When looking at school shootings, over 72% of shooters had at least one reported adverse childhood experience and 60% reported being bullied in person or online. An adverse childhood experience is a clearly defined group of events that includes traumatic events or a harmful environment. The list for traumatic events is experiencing violence, abuse, or neglect, witnessing a violence in the home or community, or having a family member attempt or die by suicide. The things that are considered to be a harmful environment include substance use problems, mental health problems, or instability due to parental separation or household members being in jail or prison. The adverse Childhood Experience Score, or ACE score, is a long-established tool to predict a person's risk for adverse outcomes in life. If you're interested in knowing your ACE score, you can take the ACE quiz online. And if you want to learn more about the ACE score, you can check out ACE score, how it impacts life, family, and community, or what is the ACE and PCE have, uh, do you have? So I'll put those links all in the description so that you can go check them out. And that is it for my rambling today. Thanks for coming and spending some time with me. If you like the, the video, get a like button, a little clicky click. It really does help. And until we talk again, you guys be sure to take care of yourselves. Bye.